Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Dr. Robinson, and we are going to continue our study on proportions. This time we're talking in reference to represent proportional relationships. Represent proportional relationships. So our lesson outcome we hope to achieve is for students to use the constant of proportionality to represent proportional relationships by ex by equations in real world contexts context as they relate the equations to a corresponding ratio table and or graphical representation. Points you have to remember proportion rela proportional relationships have a constant ratio or unit rate. The constant ratio or re unit rate can also be called the constant of proportionality. You remember equation I gave where y is equal to some constant times x? Well, to get the constant of proportionality, that number that's always occurring, you can just divide y value by the x value and that'll give you that constant, which is called the unit rate. Here's an example. An, exa an empty swimming pool is being filled at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. Make an equation and graph to display the amount of water in the pool each minute for six minutes. So the first thing we should do is find out what's the number of minutes we're dealing with. And it's going to correspond to a number of gallons. So we'll call the number of minutes x and we'll call the number of gallons y. How do they relate? Well, x is the independent variable, comes first, and y is a dependent variable. Why is x independent? Because it's doing its own thing, whereas y, the number of gallons in the swimming pool, depends on how many minutes you fill it up. So if I filled it up for no minutes, I have no water, no gallons. If I filled it up for one minute, and it's filling at a rate of 10 gallons per minute. So that'd be 10 times 1, which would be 10 gallons. If I filled it up for 2 minutes, it'd be 10 times 2. That'd be 20 gallons. If I filled it up for 3 minutes, it'd be 10 times 3, 30 gallons of water. And I'm going to go all the way down to 6 minutes. So 4 times 10 is 40 gallons of water. 5 minutes times 10 gallons gives you 50 gallons and of course the six minute mark which is the last six times 10 gallons of water which gives us 60 gallons. So this is our chart from zero minutes to six minutes and notice it goes a corresponding 10 is being multiplied by each number of minutes to give us the corresponding y value. So the constants of proportionality would be 10. Here is our table. x would represent the minutes, y would represent the gallons. So we have to graph this in a graph coordinate plane. So let's select this and go to our math actions, generate graph, and here is the graph. So notice 0, 0, 1, 10, 2, 20, 3, and we have minutes on the x-axis as we had in our chart and the gallons go up because that's a dependent variable and you should be aware that the dependent variable goes up on the y-axis and the independent variable goes across on the x-axis. And here we got all the way from 6 minutes up to 60 gallons. So all of these points of graph, if I connect it with a line, it goes straight through the origin so we know that the change from one minute to the next minute is a constant ratio of 10 over 1. So 1 will give you 10. Add another 10 
for that would give you 20 for two minutes at another 10 so notice how it keeps changing up every time we move over one box to the right it goes up by 10 and that's the constant of proportionality so here's an equation right what will be the model what will what write an equation that will model the proportional relationship given in the real world situation there are three cans that store nine tennis balls. So I see we have some tennis balls there, and we got three cans. So give me a minute to try to figure it out, storing those tennis balls in the can. And remember, you only have three cans, and you got nine tennis balls. So what do you think each can can hold? And if you said nine balls divided by three cans, B for balls, C for can, that'll be three balls per one can. So one can would equal one third of the balls. So if you look at it, one third, that's an interesting fraction. But I take one-third of these balls. So I would take just one-third. I would divide this up into three parts. So well, let's just divide this up into three quick parts here. And I got nine balls. So here's a third, here's a third, and here's a third. So if I took one-third of all the balls, that would give me the number, number of cans that I would have. So there would be one can to carry these balls, one can to carry these three balls, and one can to carry these three balls. So a can would equal one-third of all of the balls. So three balls per one can. So there is your equation. Check for your understanding. If you don't understand it, watch the video, write down your questions, and we'll pick up tomorrow if you're still uncertain. Here's a, where we're going to start about a package and how much it costs for a package. Remember, the equation represents the relationship. Consider the cost per package. So how much would it cost for every package? So I hope you got something out of this. Remember, if you need to watch the video again, please do. And write down your questions. And I'll see you on tomorrow. Bye-bye.